Today I'm going to talk about the Fed 2. When I was starting in photography, one of the first cameras I ever bought was a Zorky 4K, and I remember paying £27 for that camera, which was a second hand camera. I really enjoyed using it. I was quite impressed with how fast the lens was, I was quite impressed with how sharp the photographs were. I used it all over the country. I quite enjoyed using it. However, I was dying to get a single lens reflex camera. So the poor Zorky was sold off and I went into the single lens route. Then years later, I began to get interested in the idea of having a Leica, couldn't afford a Leica, wanted an old rangefinder Leica and went back to the Russian cameras. And initially I was using a Zorky one and then bought a Fed one and the Fed one is really copied on the Leica and it looks like a Leica 3. Fed, <coughs> which is a, <coughs> Fed is a fascinating story and I'm not going to go into it now but if you do a bit of investigation on the web you will find a really interesting story about the Fed Russian camera company and how they operated and the workforce. And the, the Fed one as I said was a successful camera. In 1955 they launched this, the Fed 2. Now it was quite a different camera and it was redesigned. Obviously it's got, has features which refer heavily to the Fed 1. The biggest new difference was this distance here of the viewfinder and the range finder. Now this difference is supposed to enhance the range finder experience and be easier and better for focusing. And I must say, when I came to use this, I did find the focusing to be bright. Um, and I was amazed that the um, two mirror images worked really well and seemed to be accurate, which doesn't always happen with a camera of this age. To load the camera, you have to undo these little buttons at the bottom and then this carefully comes so the entire back comes off. It's not hinged, it actually comes off. Now do check that that is intact here. This is the winding on spool. It's a cloth shutter and that is one of the weaknesses and strengths of the camera. The cloth shutter works extremely well. It's a focal plane shutter. But after 50 years of use, these sh um, cloth shutters often do need servicing. So it really is one of the weaknesses of the camera is that they often need a service. And another weakness of the camera can be the shutter. What some people sometimes do not realise you have to do, you have to wind on before setting the shutter speed. If you set the shutter speed when the camera has just been operated, you will break the camera. So always, always wind on, okay? Obviously load the film manually. Make sure when you put the bottom back on it's correctly in. You have to remember to set the counter here to naught. It's not an automatic counter, counter, it's one you have to set. We have a range of shutter speeds from B, 30th up to 500th of a second, so not a fast range. And we don't have slow speeds, but we do have a B. The earlier cameras if you have one of these and you find it has 1 25th of a second, that is obviously an earlier camera. And you might find the lens is slightly different to the lens I have here. I think this model take dates from about 1962. As I said, they started to produce them in 1955 and they actually carried on until 1970. They were making the Ed Fed 
three by then, and I think even the Fed four. So this model, and they made well over a million of these. So it's not an uncommon camera. Going back to use, so we've got the film in, and we've round on, so we can change our shutter speed, and I'm going to change it to 1 25th of a second. To focus, we simply, very difficult with glasses on sometimes, um, so we find we've got a diopter adjuster, so we can adjust it to be in focus to our eye, and then we have a, a mirror double image in the middle, and we move the lens until the double image is one image, and when we've got to that point, so the two images come together, and then we know it is in focus. We have to set the aperture manually, so either use a little exposure meter, or I often use, if I haven't got an exposure meter with me, what we call the sunny 16 rule. If it's sunny, it's 16, and you go 16, um, sunny, bit cloudy, 11, um, getting dull, 5.6, very, very dull, f4, or even if you're inside, might be 2.8. When you've taken all your photographs, you have to rewind the film, and on here you need to press the shutter in and put it to the left to turn it round, and that will unrelease the clutch. Then you bring this up here and rind back. This is a bit of a pain. Why they couldn't invent the little lever of a cam, which they did later, I don't know. So just rind it back like that. And that is basically it. I recently used this and I was nicely surprised. I think the first thing that I really liked was the fact the quality of handling was nice. It was easy to focus, it was easy to set. The viewfinder I actually prefer to the Zorky, the Zorky form, which I find too big. And I used to like the original Zorkies with the small viewfinders because I found I could actually see more of the image. So as I said, this afternoon I took a range of photographs and I'm just going to talk through some of the photographs. These are taken in Dorset and by Rare and Key. And it's October as I'm taking this and talking about this, but a very dull October Sunday afternoon. Yesterday was a glorious autumn day and today was extremely dull. And this, as you can see, some of the lights are coming on in this little town of Wareham. And this image is absolutely fine. It is dull. I think this was taken about F4. A little bit going at the sides, but quite as I would describe it satisfactory as an image. This one was again f4, maybe even open a bit more, and it could be a bit sharper. It's of the Priory Hotel in Rareham. The river at Rareham. Rareham is a lovely Dorset town that did get invaded by the Vikings, I think, 14 times. The 14, one for the Vikings invaded and burnt the town down. Um, but now it's a very peaceful town. And here we are with the river. The river flows. The river Froom and Piddle meet at Rome and flow to the sea at Poole, well, to the harbour at Poole. Again, you can appreciate how dull an afternoon this was, but sometimes I think it's actually, you don't always want sun. Um, Dullness actually gives you a wonderful range of greys, and I quite like that in these boats here. Oh, nice reflections. I, the film used here is FP4 and developed in um, ID11. I like to dilute it um, one to one, basically to save on the cost of ID11. 
And because this is quite an old stock film, this was a film that was hanging around in the bulk loader for years and years and years. So I have increased, I think the normal developing time would be 11 minutes. I actually developed this for 11 and a half minutes at 20 degrees C. And you see this was in F4. Um, ridged farm sign and okay it is dull but I quite like that and it is grey but I quite like that always a bit fascinated by sign posts we have some great place names in Dorset Arn Village, Stroborough Green, Corf Castle, Bon Hill Road, Bon Hill Road the lady taking her downs for her afternoon walk behind is the wonderful Purbeck Hills not crack lane what a name but again a little bit dark but not bad um, you see we've got a tiny bit of a narrow depth of field there um, the nut isn't quite in focus where the lane is beautifully in focus and now we are back in Dorchester uh, again it was oh but I wanted to use up the film and have a look at how the photographs were. This is an uh, industrial estate. Again, all very grey, but I'm quite pleased with the range of tones on this camera. And I actually think I'm going to almost 2.8 here because it was getting very dull indeed. But again, you can see the lens is quite sharp with antiques and decor. Here we've got the High Street in Dorchester. Again, this was about five o'clock on the late October afternoon, so it's getting dull. I'm surprised the cars, well, some of the cars have got their lights on, but not all of the cars. And finally, the direct pizza company. Um, so, I was actually, in conclusion, really surprised with how happy I was at using this camera this afternoon. As I said before, I've owned a couple of them before and you do need to check them very carefully that the shutter's working and even when the shutter is working, you don't actually quite know until you get the camera home. The I have actually in the past even sent them to Russia for servicing. They used to be a superb chap called Oleg um, and if anyone if he's still out there servicing cameras and anyone has the details please put a comment on because he was absolutely fantastic and I had a beautiful um, it was a Zorki um, I think it was a Zorki 3 a 3M and he did that beautifully so if you find a Fed don't write it off maybe have a go with it and you might be as, as surprised as I was thank you for watching Bye for now.